Welcome to In The Workshop. This is about some problems I had recently with a duplex steam pump. I was assembling a very high quality steam plant and it really is good. But if you've been watching the series you will realise that I had some problems with the pump owing to contamination by silicone rubber and lots of silicone rubber. The first thing I did, and this is covered in the series, is I dismantled the pump. And after I reassembled the pump it still didn't pump water into the boiler. It pumped water into the tank but I couldn't get any water into the boiler when there was any pressure in the boiler. So I thought to myself, well, maybe it's because the clack valve's a bit small. And because the clack valve's small, the piping is a very small diameter. So I looked in my box of interesting, useful steam fittings and found this. This is a much larger clack valve, and it has a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch thread on both ends of it. So I had to modify this because 3 8 by 32 threads generally do not screw into a quarter by 32 boiler bush. Using a quarter by 32 threads per inch tap, I threaded the hole into the clack, and then I turned up a brass ring, which I also threaded, to fit over the existing 3 8 thread. And then I screwed the entire assembly into the boiler bush. Then I bent a piece of quarter inch pipe to the right shape, silver soldered some unions on the end of this pipe, made an adapter for the T piece, and put it all together. So with renewed enthusiasm, I decided to make some gaskets. And for this, I bought some brown paper. This clip shows the lower section of the water chest. I cleaned this up and fitted the paper gasket to it. And the reason the gasket looks like this is I used my ink pad to transfer the shape of the steam chest onto the paper. And once I'd done all this for the second time, I put the water chest back together and the good news is it didn't leak. And it did pump water into the tank with a good bit more pressure when I put my finger over the pipe. But the minute that I shut the bypass valve, it refused to pump against boiler pressure. So what is the problem, I wonder? Inside this water chest, there are eight water valves. Four for the inlet and four for the outlet. These valves are the same shape as valves used in cars. And they sit over a hole and they ground into the hole so that the seat of the valve matches the seat in the hole. So what can possibly go wrong? Why aren't the valves working? So I got a magnifying glass out and I had a look at the valves and then I saw one of the problems. Some parts of the valve seatings, not on all the valves, but on some of them, were sort of eaten away. Now I wonder what kind of acid would eat into brass. I'm no expert, but maybe it's the acid that's present in silicone rubber, I really don't know. I do know that when silicone rubber is curing, you know, going off, setting hard, there's a very strong smell of vinegary acid. So I dismantled the pump once again, and then I reground the valve seats on all eight of the valves, and put it back together, making two new gaskets in the process. And guess what? When it was all back together and working, I could pump some water into the boiler against boiler pressure. For about 30 seconds. So it's time to take the pump further down. I took the next layer of the pump off. And surprise, surprise, I found massive amounts of silicone rubber in there too. I didn't think this would have been taken off in the first place, but yes, it had been. So I'm going to attempt to remove all traces of the silicone rubber from this pump and see what happens. And this is easier said than done. By this time my brain was starting to malfunction. And to make it worse, a friend of mine wrote a song recently called Reggae Reggae Christmas. And it's one of those songs that once you hear it, it rattles about in your head, probably until next Christmas. So my friend Jason Brooks, who wrote the song, got a man called Levi Roots to sing on it. And Levi Roots is the man who developed, allegedly, Reggae Reggae Sauce which I quite like, especially if I mix it with Branston pickle on a cheese sandwich. Anyway, that's enough of this. I've taken my medication and I'm really happy now whilst I scrape off all this silicone rubber to the tune of Reggae Reggae Christmas once again. As you can clearly see, I'm scraping off the silicone rubber residue and then using an airline to blow it away. It took quite a lot longer to do this than it's shown on the video because that's at high speed. And even worse is yet to come. Look at this. This is the main part of the valve chest. And you can see how close the silicone rubber is to the valves themselves. This is not good. All the valves are quite free in the holes. And as I've thoroughly ground in the valves four times so far, I'm sure that they're seating okay. By the way, you can see a stud in the hole at the left hand side. It's not broken, it hasn't snapped off. As I undid the nuts on the top of the water chest, it just unscrewed from the main casting. Most of the silicone rubber has gone. And after rubbing this part on a piece of 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper, I really am hoping I've got rid of all the particles of silicone rubber. And once again, I need to make some new gaskets. 
I wish I had a set of these. I think this is about the fifth time this pump's been down, so that's the fifth set of gaskets. I don't show everything on the videos. And I don't show when I bang my head on the wall of the workshop, nor do I show it when I sort of cry or go into the garden and have a primal screaming session. I even went up to Blackgates Engineering and bought a piece of thin gasket material. Even though the gasket material was thin, it wasn't thin enough, so I went back to the paper idea. But I decided not to use the recycled brown paper because it's not very good at all. And this is some paper that I got from my daughter Charlotte, and it's very good quality stuff. In order to fully seat this bottom block of the water chest, I used a soft hammer to tap it into position. So the combination of the good quality paper, covered in steam oil and tapped into position, should be okay. We shall see. At least it's not covered in silicone rubber anymore. Just as an experiment, I coated the other two gaskets in some Loctite 542. So we'll see whether this seals or not. All I need to do now is fit these six 6BA nuts again. This is the sixth time I've done this. That's once for each nut on top of the water chest. I have a good idea what's actually happening inside the water chest to make it not pump water against pressure, but it's a difficult fix really. And the problem is that there are quite a few particles of silicone rubber still left in the water system. I've flushed the tank five times, and each time I've got some more tiny particles of silicone rubber because what I think happened was when the excessive amount of silicone rubber was splurged into the water chest, it wasn't given time to cure fully before the engine was run. So the water carried some pieces of silicone rubber around the system. So there will be silicone rubber down in the main cylinders. It's time to try it now. And some water's gone up the glass. Now this is a very good thing. And the pressure now coming out of the bypass valve is good. Really good. I can hardly stop it. But the point is, with my finger I can stop it. And I shouldn't be able to. I think at a future date this pump is a candidate for a complete rebuild and it would be a ground-up rebuild on the water side. The steam side is fine, no problems at all. It's just the water and the silicone rubber issue. With this type of valve, the mushroom-type poppet valves, it's not like a ball valve. They will generally be quite forgiving and let particles through. But if any particle of silicone rubber, however small, lodges between the valve face and the mating face on the block, then it's going to let water through, and it's not going to get any better. And as for me, I'm not getting any better either. Reggae, reggae Christmas is still rattling around my head. I think I'm going to check into rehab. That's it for the moment. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.